I came from a farming family where really there weren't any musicians around except for my mother who was uh, quite a good amateur pianist but she's the only musician otherwise they're farmers and politicians. But I was, I was attracted to percussion for a number of reasons. For one, it was really the first, that was the first generation where, where rock music was a substantial influence. I wanted to be a rock player. And then when I finally went to study at the University of Iowa, percussion as a contemporary vehicle, as a contemporary medium, was just beginning to take off. And there was this real sense of excitement around it. The fact that there were new things happening, this idea of exploration, of, of change. So I think that if it hadn't been for percussion, I probably wouldn't be a musician. I really became a percussionist first. That was the thing that drew me in. And then later I discovered the, you know, the interactions with all kinds of other sorts of music and other instruments and things like that. But I think it was really the drum that kind of hooked me. So my training is really as a classical percussionist. You know, I learned the orchestral repertoire, I learned all the basic techniques. And that's how I think of myself today. It's true that I, I leveraged those techniques against a music which uh, I found interesting and adventurous. Uh, but in many ways I think of myself as a very straightforward traditional percussionist who has interest in a certain kind of music. Solo percussion is a very recent genre. It was modeled after a few very, very important pieces. And those pieces were all very difficult tour de force. There was no such thing as a kind of etude. There was no middle ground repertoire whatsoever. You had to go from very, very basic studies to incredibly difficult music with no way to prepare yourself. So when I first was learning Stockhausen and Sinakis, it wasn't as though I had somehow built up to that point. You just went from zero to, to 60, basically. So the challenge was, of course, not just to master this medium, but to expand it. five pieces and I would go back to my practice room and and choose a brake drum from a car for one of my as an instrument or see if you could play a, a gong underwater did that work I mean this is the things that we were doing it was just like in the sort of refined fancy neighborhood that that was classical music percussionists were the people with the with the trucks up on cinder blocks in their front yards I mean we were really you know, bringing down the property values basically of, uh, of classical music And I was conscious of this, I mean, drawn to it, that there wasn't really a tradition, that I was, in many ways, amongst the oldest players, even at age 22, who were interested in this. And so it was a fascinating thing to know that you were doing, you know, three quarters of what you did as a student had never been done before. So you have all of those different kinds of sounds which fold together to make, I hope at least, a coherent musical statement. 
if you listen to percussion that way, sometimes you can see it kind of pull apart into instruments which are ancient and have traditional roots in various musical cultures, and instruments which are new or modern or urban or unheard of before the last 50 years. The break drum, which is you know, a very common percussion instrument, you obviously did not find Berlioz or Brahms scoring for break drum because there were no breaks and no drums. <laughs> So we are constantly dealing with creating musical force and then passing it through a changeable series of, of objects. And that has implications of sound, but it has also implications of movement and of, of, of the visual effect because every, you, you're really playing on a stage. I mean, percussion instruments are sculptural entities in a way and they exert choreographic force. You move in and around those instruments depending on what the shapes are. Well, if each and every piece has a different instrumental shape, then each piece exerts a different choreographic impulse and impetus. So the way a piece looks also derives, accretes around its, its physicality, its physical structure of instruments. This is really just, you know, no other instrument can say that. A performer, in my opinion at least, tries to reproduce the sensations of performance. So if a person comes to me and describes a listening experience that's somehow similar to the experience I have playing, then I think, oh, well that's what I want. That's great. The, the question of, of genre and the question of marketability I've surrendered a lot in terms of my thoughts about that. I mean, this, these were conscious decisions on my part because as a performing musician, you have options and you have potentially different pathways. It's not a given that the goal of a performing musician is to play as much as possible in as many different ways as possible in the highest profile venues. So because I'm less marketable by choice, I don't really care. I don't care what anyone says, uh, wh how it's classified. I don't think about it at all. And um, I, I think in, to a very large extent, it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm.